Sorry guys and girls, just getting some last stuff set up before we crack on. Sorry guys with and everything. girls. Just so now set we are live. Yeah. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. Oh, I need to mute that so you could hear that. Then I apologise. That was some mess up on my part. So anyway, let's do this. We are continuing on from where we left off. Well, actually. Just a heads up to everyone. I uh, losing, stumbling my words here. I continued on a little bit more just to progress uh, without you just to keep going. So I've done a few more things. So there's some slight changes to things you might not know. But we're going to continue regardless with Nier because I still think it's a interesting game because we've got some different camera perspectives used and everything. So I think it's a really cool, cool one to break down. This one's going to be about 20 to 30 minutes long session. I might be, be cutting a little bit shorter than I would like solely just because of the fact that I've still got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, almost finished my presentation, but I want to thank, uh, I believe, who, on just two seconds, let me get, make sure I get the name right. Uh, I just want to thank Dennis, who helped me out with sending a great article over to me, excuse me, for, for my talk. So I've been able to go through to my talk and add some really cool information from that to uh, to my talk, which is awesome. So it's made it even better. Uh, so yeah, I need to do some stuff there. I've got a flight to catch as well uh, tomorrow. Still a lot of things to do uh, in terms of things, getting things ready for that, which is no pressure. I definitely handle stress well. Yep. <laughs> so I'll be doing stuff like that. Things going on. I just want to double check. Did I actually say 6 or 6 30? Let's just double check here. Mm -hmm. No, I did say 6. Sorry about that. That's a quick. I just wanted to make sure because there's not many people actually coming in for the stream, but regardless, we're still going to crack on. Uh, as I said, there's quite a lot of stuff for me to do still. I need to buy train tickets over to to the uh, to the destination. But let's go chat with some people, see what we've got to do. I hear you kicked some tin can ass out in the desert. So I guess, you know, thanks or whatever. She sounds really grateful. It's all right. We only faced a lot of stuff out there that almost killed us. I think we've earned a breather. Say to be. I was hoping we could talk about our next move. I'm worried about the damage we took in that last battle with the machines. Maybe we should return to the resistance camp to resupply and conduct maintenance. Uh, may as well. Let's All see right. it together. Let's go back. You got it. Is there a way to fast travel in this game? Yes, there is. Uh, two seconds. I should know what we're doing here. Maybe there's not a way to fast travel. Uh, okay, I've actually got quite a bit of recovery still. Let's just buy some new weapons and continue from there. And then we'll be able to talk more about this. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for securing access to those desert resources. It's a huge help. I know it isn't much, but please take this. It's the least. Oh, and be sure to swing by if you ever need anything, all right? That's cool. What can I help you with? Let's buy some of them. So this is uh, supposed to be a point where you can actually upgrade your system as well. Uh, let's see what we can go. Hey, Brad, how's things? Yeah, all good, man, all good. Uh, you won't miss it, but this might be a short one, buddy, just sadly due to a lot of stuff I have to 
to do. I've got some stuff I need to sort out. Uh, I'm flying out tomorrow, so there's some things that uh, I need to figure out. So other than that, man, it is all good. Uh, plug in chips. Okay. Sorry, this is a, an all interesting one. You're not hearing me talk much. Let's get back to business. Sorry about that, guys. Let's continue with the goal. I don't know if you noticed there, but the camera's actually being forced to look up there, so you can kind of see kind of where we're supposed to be going, the framing of this as well, very interesting. So let's... Ooh, silky smooth attacks. Ooh. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to think how, uh, what's, what else we can bring up. So, what I like about this is, if we look here, we've got the main paths showing what once was. Whilst you look at their metrics are slightly bigger as well. So when you've got the main path, you tend to have these bigger spaces, as you see from here. But what we can look at, we also have some smaller paths available to us but you see how again they're smaller they're using for shortcuts so using size you can actually help tell the player what's the main path that it can take as well as lesser paths as well so when you're designing stuff think about that think about how how you can use size to also hint what is the golden path and where players need to go I think this is interesting. Right, so I'm running normally. If you look, I can control the camera pretty well. But when you press the sprint button, if you actually notice, the camera then moves further down. Now, that's just a small detail, but I really do like that because that's just showing the speed available, showing that not only do you feel it and you can see it, but even a small change like the camera showing as if they're moving so fast that it's now starting to change direction of the camera can give nice feedback for the player. So. Really nicely well done there from the team. A bit of dodge and roll. Now this is interesting. Ooh, also I'm getting attacked. Let me just take out these before I make that comment. Okay, back to down here I want to mention. So we have this building here, we've got this ventilation around it, right? But there's a couple of things here. Metrics don't seem to be followed because you can see these the little robots are actually through the roof. Also, when you're building these spaces, try to think what they were. Because I've come in here thinking, okay, well maybe that would be like the entrance from the, uh, from the building. But if we look, there's nothing here. Now I'm not saying you need to prop everything out, or just like a fake door or something or you know that would have led to the stairs because when you're looking at this although from quick here on the outside it looks like it would make logical sense it doesn't from the inside so when you're doing buildings and adding these extra rooms make sure it actually adds logical sense as well to your areas nail that I do like the amount of different ways that you can traverse their areas as well. We could have run through the path, had all the shortcuts, but also coming up top through the roofs. 
So I think that's very interesting, especially from a level design perspective. When you're making open worlds or big sandbox kind of levels, think about how the player can traverse through it. Because even just the traversal journey can be a very entertaining one within itself. Oh, have I come all the way back to the camp? Okay. That's fine. I want to talk about barriers as well. Because as you can see, we probably actually cannot make our way up there. And that's very readable in terms of you've got these kind of grated metal over there. I think that's really a good one on how, basically just how you can show and label to people to block things, you know? So think about that when you're moving forward with stuff. How to actually have a barrier that is clear to the players that they cannot cross. And again, I mentioned this last time, with that visual language, we now know we're in a safe space because of these tarps. They're white, meaning pure, also white, flag of surrender, these sort of things. So, again... Okay. Those sort of things can hint to the player on where they need to go. So let's talk to the person in question. That's interesting. Let's go check it out. Okay, so we have a nice safe room, which is cool. Let's see if we can buy some new weapons or something. Upgrade our gear. any of this is full, so I could be selling it and it just goes amiss. Let's see if we've got any weapons here from this dude. Let's see what he's got. Seems like I've got the best we can here. I think I just sold the upgrade stuff. Well done me. What a fool. Okay. Now I've done that, let's see what else we can do. What's our quests? Have I actually got any quests? Sorry, this is not the most entertaining one. I know that one for sure now. Like, oh. Okay, let's go to one of these events then? Let me check it out. Sorry about this. 
I completed a boss battle earlier while we were off air, and I thought that would have led to more missions, but seems not Operator so much. Operator to 9S. This is 9S. Hold on. Go ahead. I have an incoming message for 2B and 9S from the commander. Initiating playback. 2B, 9S. We've lost contact with several Yorha units that were on their way to the surface. Their black boxes are online, so we presume they're still alive. We've tracked the location of their signals, so I need all Yorha units on the surface to head over and investigate. End okay. transmission. Hmm. Looks like we've now got a mission something then. about that back at the resistance camp. Target location confirmed. I'm worried about the other androids. So let's we go check it check out. Check this out as soon as possible. I will say what's interesting with this is they've always got the side quests and then kind of random enemies and yes it's an abandoned area but it definitely feels very barren in terms of certain things you obviously have these people that you can random just the attack maybe it's because I'm still early in the game but you know there should be more coming later Keep going. Oh, by the the way, everyone, I will be doing God of War next week. Uh, I played some more last night. God, I love that game. I think it's amazing. Sadly, I've not had as much time as I would have liked to have played the game, just due to other other work commitments. But it is a fantastic game. It's Looks like our that. surface route's been cut off. Maybe we can get through from underground. This is cool. Open up more layers to the, to so the world. So, 2B, those machines out in the desert look just like androids, right? Right. But we androids were modeled after our human creators. So why would machines try to look like us? Hmm. There's no point trying to work out unsolvable problems. I suppose. Okay. Maybe we can get out this way. See what we've got. Ladders are an interesting thing in level design. I know some people like to use them, other ones, other people don't, due to, as you can see, this. But I think that's always interesting. Oh, this looks cool. Let's get a new weapon. Ooh. Let's have a look at what we've got here. Twenty forty. Ah. Well, Sally won't be replacing anything, as cool as that was. But I like that reward for exploration. So let's get back to it. Find the right way. Let's see if this is the way. But let's see what we can get from here. What is everyone else playing, by the way? Anyone playing anything good? Okay. This is nice in terms of tone change. So from where we were from the desert to you know quite an open space, we've now got a much more linear kind of feel with all these trees. Also the trees making it feel very different with the fog and mist. Definitely a way to make the player feel that they're in a new area and they're on an important quest as well. What in the heck? This is interesting. Kind of like a weird Alice in Wonderland. Something like Kingdom Hearts with that shape. Okay. 
What are those? Huh. What the? Well, this is weird. Let's be happy This is really, really interesting. And you notice how the music has changed to that. That was similar of when we were in the bass as well. Let's just ignore them. And move quietly through here. Oh, what is this? Huh. That's cool. Let's just go back here because then we can learn some level design from this. Right, okay. So, here, we've got that great weenie. We also have a lot of effects drawing us up here. So, obviously, when we look around here as well, how they've created the space... Let me just pick up this item here. You see how they create the space? Because it's very... There's not much going on. You know, it's, it's very clear. It's very simple in terms of the land. I use simple in the most you know, complimenting way because you don't need to have all the clutter on the screen. And they've got these trees almost like a vignette to frame this building here. This is clearly our we need our landmark. Now can we get through what's very interesting, they do a very similar thing like that of any of the music parties. You don't just have a straight way and then this might just be for loading as well. They have this fountain statue here, making the player have to move around. So again, it cuts off what would normally be a straight eight line. But then we keep framing the building and the heart shape up here. Now there are other options to our left and right, or right and left. But again, all that framing is leading you here as we see more of the heart progressing. What's interesting with this though, that I think, uh, can you talk to him? Is this still quite open to say that this is a, uh, oh, interesting flow. To say this is just a side path. It's still quite big. This is another thing that Nier does very, very well and very, very different. Is it's not afraid to change the camera to make it feel of a genre. So now we have a much more kind of a 2.5D platformer with this camera view. Okay. That's one of the things that I think Nier does very well is it blends the different types of gameplay to one, you know, into one genre. You wouldn't have seen it if you played the beginning of the game, you go into like a bullet hell kind of style as well. So there's a lot going on in different ways. Pick that up. This gate isn't going to open. Maybe there's another way around. That's nice. So you come all this way to then help you make go and explore, which is interesting. I don't like how they were coming close as well, that got eerie. Okay. Ooh, that is the time though, peeps. I'm sorry about this episode. I thought it would have been a lot more going on, so I do apologize. That was not my intention. But next week we'll be streaming God of War. So I hope you've enjoyed what we've done so far of Nier. Um, <laughs> it's alright, Jack and I've made it's all good. And you sadly come at the worst time because it's about to like end, bud, so I do apologize. Uh, so next week will be God of War. If you have enjoyed Nier, do let me know. I will try 
get get back into it if you guys want to. Uh, if there's anything you want to ask questions, please do so on the stream, as this is more about asking and learning about game and level design, and it's not just about uh, just me playing it. Because you can see, I'm not always the most talkative, so I apologize there. I'm still getting into the. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is awkward, Jack. <laughs> I'm not always the uh, the best at this yet. I'll still get better. But if there's anything you all want from me, just let me know, and I will try and prove this. And like I said, next week will be God of War, so I'm looking forward to that. That is a masterclass of level design, in my opinion. So thank you all very, very much. Sorry about this, and Jack and I. Sorry, even more so for you, bud. Uh, but you can rewatch everything when you come back. So. I will see you all next time. Take it easy, everyone. And uh, ciao. Uh, ciao for now. You did, uh, buddy, but like I said, this will be still up. You can still rewatch it here. Then after the 14 days are done, I generally take all the Twitch streams, webinars, and put them onto my YouTube channel as well. So these are all archived, so don't worry. Uh, this was kind of a last minute thing to do. For the next week or two, I will be continuously coming back on Thursdays around about a similar time to stream, try to turn this into a weekly thing while, you know, I don't know if we're going to continue to make it weekly, we might do. Um, something that I'm messing around with at least. So anyway, I'm sorry for, for making it a bit shorter than usual. As I said, i got like a plane and stuff to catch tomorrow, so I've got a lot of stuff to figure out and sort out because it's been a bit of a nightmare getting these flight uh, tickets booked, which was my stupidity. Uh, <laughs> no other way around it. But thank you all very, very much for tuning in and watching. Sorry about it being shorter and that you, some of you just tuned in now. But anyway, all the best. Sending best thoughts to you. I say, if you've got anything else, let me know. And take care, everyone. I'll catch you all next time. See ya. Oh, oh actually, before we go, uh, this is, I keep teasing you all. I just want to say thank you all very, very much for the support. It has been a year since I've launched Level Design Lobby, which, in case you're wondering, that's why there's not as many podcast episodes, because I'm taking a, a bit of a break for the year. Um, but there's still going to be episodes. There is an episode out on the podcast next week, which is just edited yesterday, so that's all done and dusted. And then we'll do uh, one more for the final week as well. And just thank you. We also just reached over $200 on the Patreon, which is amazing. So thank you all for helping to get there. I really, really, really do appreciate that. And yeah, thank you all for watching, just tuning in, making the podcast and this even better because we're doing even more stuff like the webinars with this and also some exciting news. I'll be announcing it on the Patreon, but for those who are tuned in, great news. The second, se second level design weekend is taking place this November. I haven't decided an exact date yet, exact date yet, but the second one is coming November. I'm super excited. You all did an amazing job last time and I can't wait to do more of it. So remember that it's coming in November. There'll be more information coming out. So I will catch you all now, finally, all next time. See you later, peeps. Bye.